bottom line is, is you know, we want your help. We want to make sure we're doing it right, make sure our analysis is okay. And what we're, what we're trying to do is come up with something called a finding of no significant impact by the actions that we're doing. And once that, that's done, it's part of the environmental assessment that Bill is helping write and everybody else is doing. Um, once that, that EA is signed, the FONSI is signed, assuming there is no impact, then the project can proceed. They have no actions, the existing conditions, this is what it looks like. You've seen it before, you got the dam, you got the raceway pond, you got the bill race, you got the east channel up here. There's a small dam in here that you can't see. And then the island, we're going to do some stuff there. Will that be Will that be an island after this is done? It still will be an island, yes. Maybe less flow coming through the east channel, though. Just a little easier view of this. I won't spend too much time on it. Just to give you the idea. Flow's coming this way. Dam again, the bridge. Some of the things that we're going to do, the raceway, a lot of erosion control measures that you'll see. This is really busy, obviously, but I, I'll describe a little bit here and make sure there's several, a lot of actions going on, so you, you can't read them, but I'll, I'll basically go through them real quick. Up above here, you're going to see some what's called straight veins, like right here. That's an erosion control measure. There's nine of them that are going to be upstream. And then you have this large towwood mat, towwood willow mat. That's also going to protect the erosion. And I'll get a lot more detail as we go through this, but I just want to highlight the stuff that is in here. Again, here's the raceway pond. We're going to propose to fill that in. The fish ladder is going to be closed and filled in. We're going to remove the dam, eight feet of it. An elevation. There's another vein here across a straight vein for control, erosion control right here too below it. Um, the east channel you can kind of see it up there. There's a small dam, old dam here. That's going to be removed. That's the one that's causing erosion and getting away the, the island. You're removing the whole dam? We're proposing to, but uh, the lion's dam? Yes. Yeah, we're taking eight feet off. So that the dam's going to go down to elevation 834. And then there's going to, I'll get to a little bit later, but there'll be a rock ripple that'll be at elevation 635, and that's going to provide fish passage. What is the height of the dam right now? Um, uh, it's going to be like 642, somewhere around there. There's eight feet ahead behind the dam. The graphic that'll come up yeah. here soon that'll show all that. There's some bridge works that you don't see in here, but that is not part of the EA. We are not discussing that. It's not part of it. It's funded by the village. There was also a water pipeline that went underneath the river. That's been completed. That will not be in the EA. The fishing platform at the end of the island, that's already completed. That will not be in here. It'll be discussed at the back of the EA environmental assessment as cumulative impacts of other things that have occurred or will occur. Can you tell me how long it will be before the fish and the things do start returning after this project is complete? What well, uh, estimated years before the fishing will return and things? It really shouldn't change much at all. all we're, the construction is proposed to start if we get the FONSI in July, once or September, so you're going to have some disruption there, but it shouldn't really impact the fish coming back at all. Some will be displaced during construction, of course, but you really shouldn't see any long-term impact. And if Scott has something to add, you're more than welcome to. No, it'll be instantaneous. Just a clear view. And also the access roads. You can kind of see again everything I talked about. The dam, fish ladder, bridge. Small dam here. You can see that a little bit better there. What I did talk about is there's going to be the, the causeways to the road back here that leads to the island. There'll be some great control structures there. There'll be some erosion control measures. There'll be another straight vein there. And then there'll be along the, the riverside, the west side, I call it, northwest side, there'll be some riprap also to protect the island on that side. Another straight vein coming off the end, too. Well, right here, the main point of this one is the access roads. There's six access roads, guys. This just gives you a better plain view of the towing mass structure. 
This is that 1,600 foot erosion control method that we're talking about right here. What it is is basically made up of trees. There's 250 trees that we're going to need with the root wad attached. They're about 20 foot in length, the diameter can vary. And it can be any species of tree. As you can see how they go in here. There's another 200 logs or foundation logs. Those are 18 foot long. Again, about 12 to 18 inches in diameter, any species. And then you also have a willow mat, you have rocks or, cape or cobble that go in, and then there's a shock board, and that's all that we put along here to stabilize that wet bank so it doesn't erode and go. It's common forms, okay? So we want your we want your input. You're telling us that you've got lands that you value access to the river. I provide provide that comment in a written form, okay? We we want that. And is it ain't gonna do any good? Of course, are you with DEQ? No. No. I'm with, I'm with a, a consulting firm in support of Fish and Wildlife. But what I'm saying is, there is that process, okay? And this meeting here is the is the early part of this process. It's called scoping. It's, it's a process where we solicit input from you, we solicit input from other agencies, not just Fish and Wildlife, who's the, who's the lead agency for this, okay? We're looking for input. And as we prepare our analysis, okay, and we're going we're gonna to make our assessments based upon factual information, and by all means, provide factual information, okay? okay. So, so let, me, let me just get to the next piece. The next piece is that we're going to develop an environmental assessment report, as Rick indicated, all right? That report is a, is a report that evaluates a lot of different things by mandate the requirement is that we look at stuff like air quality <coughs> you might think that's not important but we have to look at it we've got to look at noise we've got to look at recreation we've got to look at land use we've got to look at erosion we've got to look at fish wildlife okay all these things there's like 15 factors we've got to look at okay so so that's part of that process and we develop this document in draft form and then it'll be out for, for review. You guys will have a chance to see it. And again, provide comment. That, that's the process. <coughs> and the, the, the decision isn't made yet. Fundamentally, it's not made. Correct. There's the no action alternative, and there is the alternative to remove the dam. Okay, the there, as, as we know it, there are problems with the existing condition, which is basically causing a need to do something. What would happen if it busted the problem area? If it busted loose, you'd have a, a more catastrophic release, an uncontrolled situation, and you'd have more damage than, than uh, would occur in a very controlled, methodical, and engineered solution. The village has already made the decision to remove the dam instead of repair it. That's a fair statement, right? Once they got federal funds, as Bill mentioned, then it's a federal decision because we are providing money to provide fish passage. Okay, that decision has not been made yet. So even though they've already made a decision to remove it, however they did that, you know, it's already done, but they don't have money to repair it, so we provide money to provide fish passage. So that's why we're here. So the federal government has not done its analysis yet. That's why we're here. That's why we're getting comments. That's why we're holding this meeting. That's why you get to review the draft EA, see if there's any significant impacts from the proposed removal of lion's dam. All right, here's Lions Dam. We already kind of talked about when it was rebuilt numerous times. Here's existing bank elevation. That's how it said 642 at 644. Here's the 1906 concrete. Here's 640, 643. So roughly right about there. We're going to take it down to 634, so roughly eight feet we be taken off the dam. Okay, it's originally a crib and stone, a rock and crib structure built in 1857. You can see here, this three foot by 12 foot thick section is going to remain. That's the base. That's going to stay there. Okay, everything above here is coming off. So you got some 1934 concrete here, 1910. And then you're going to have a rock ramp that's going to be at elevation 635 to provide fish path. And I kind of mentioned this, but also here's that 25 foot wide machine. 
we've on the access roads, all the muscles were moved by Galen and, and her crew, so they're not there, at least 80% of them. So we've taken care of that already. Two years ago. No, 2015. Oh. Oh, it's in 2013. Yeah, so in 2013, um, it was known that there were mussels, but they didn't know which species were in that area. And so our crew went in and did a survey, and that's when we were upstream and downstream. We found four species of freshwater mussel upstream of the dam and 17 species downstream of the dam, including federal and state listed species downstream of the dam.